All right, welcome back to Box to Battlefield. It's been a long time. It's um, been a couple weeks since we did the back hatch and the um, uh, different the little details that we've uh, talked about. Um, but anyway, the tiger's coming together, King Tiger. But one of the things, um, su just a suggestion, if you don't have this book at home, even though it's uh, 16 scale uh, King Tiger in this book, um, to move forward, especially with the new King Tigers are out with full interiors and what have you on the market. In 2018, uh, these these tanks are really, um, you know, one of these books to help you with those tanks is going to be necessary. Uh, let's not say necessary. It's going to be certainly helpful. Um, those tanks, as you guys know, are $100, so, um, you know, we don't want to do a half-assed job we want to go all the way with it so now I don't suggest for one minute that we spend the next 24 months on a, a 35th scale King Tiger by any stretch you don't have to go into the detail that this suggests but um, once again it's a 16 scale tank so now this book is hard to find uh, in 2018 we're sitting here in October this book was released a couple of years ago so if you can't find it this book is on the market now and it's uh you know it's available to find so you know it's um it's obviously not the same tank but the details and the similarities are, are you know right there for you so and of course i've talked about this at length but right now we're going to talk about the king tiger and again uh, zoom in on some of the finer details such as the uh tow cables, uh, the exhaust system. So we're gonna paint those today. We're gonna do some hairspraying today. We're gonna um, add the um, cupola ring around the top. Now, as you guys have noticed, it hasn't been here for all our episodes, nine episodes or whatever the episodes are. Um, certain things have been left off the tank, the hatches and what have you. Those are, um, it just is ease of us ease of painting for myself personally not to have them on there if i if i had this little turret ring on there um i would have knocked it off i wouldn't i wouldn't have been able to put the fine details as far as painting it you know this thing would have just got in the way plus it's one of those items of which there's um probably 10 items on our little King Tiger, such as this hatch that we um, talked about last time, um, that require special um, zeroing in on. You know, um, turning these into little projects, as I've spoken to, to you guys about when I, when I was assembling and, and painting the Panther, um, there's certain parts of the tank that if you specialize on, on painting them, turning them into little projects that only take a session or two. And what I mean by that is if, if, if I spend 45 minutes painting this, um, it's, it's going to look so much better than if I just had put it on in the beginning, airbrushed it green and yellow and red, and just um, let it ride. Instead, I turn this into a project, and it really helps the end result of the tank. And it's the same with the cleaning rods. Like... As you guys know, I, I, I'm not a photo etch man. I, I, I can get into a little bit of photo etch on different vehicles, but I'm just, um, I'm just, I'd, I'd rather build five tanks in a year than, than slow it right down and do one. So, um, yes, I'll make my tanks. All the grab handles are never going to be the typical Tamiya rectangles with no pass through. I'm always going to correct that with wire and all that sort of thing. But these cleaning rods also um, need a little bit of TLC. And I'm going to get into today about how to drill those out and, and make them a little better than, than what comes in the kit. And then we're going to hairspray and we're going to turn this little tow cable into a special project. Uh, uh, you know, a 45 minute project for your tank, but it's, it's going to sing. It's going to look like it's... Um, hasn't just been a afterthought and it's the same with the exhaust stacks and, and, and what have you so um, 
Where's our little, yeah, the little tow clamp, tow cable clamp. You turn these little things into um, 15 minute little projects and then pretty soon your tank is much more pleasing to the eye. So, so I'm going to cover some of those details today. And, um, and again, I'm going to address this Zimmerit soon. Some guys have been asking about how I'm going to handle this and, and, and that's not going to be a problem. Um, show you how to make a little tool to make your own Zimmerit. Um, so anyway, we have a few little things to cover and then next time we're together, because off screen I'm going to assemble the wheels. We discussed, you know, obviously the collapse of the torsion bars earlier in the these episodes. So I'm going to off screen put all the wheels on and, um, and then we're going to get to the, the last episode, which is talking about the shell hits and, and the rusting out and the, and then hopefully down the road we'll, we'll be able to put this on a little bit of groundwork and have our photographer painting it but um so let's put the um, king tiger away momentarily and i'll get into painting these now one of the things off camera that i've done because the hairspray technique is um and here's the hairspray that i like to use and this is the same hairspray that Mike Rinaldi would have used. Um, and there are other things on the market, as you guys know, for hairspray. MIG, AK probably have a, a product, a heavy chipping and, and um, small chipping and that sort of thing. And I, and I just stick with the hairspray. I'm comfortable with it. And you have to do all this in your comfort zone. So, um, so anyway, we're off camera a half an hour ago I put my first coat of hairspray on these and hairspray techniques require two little coatings you spray it let it harden up and dry which like I say is a half an hour ago and then in a minute I'm gonna hairspray it a second time with just a light coat and then we'll get into painting it up properly and, and, and carrying on so that's what we're gonna do this morning and we'll just Give this thing another little blast with our, with our hairspray and then we'll do the turret cupola ring. And gentlemen, the, the, um, the things we're going to talk about today are not necessary as far as finishing off your tank. If, 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 if this episode is... Um, Something you'd rather just leave off. It's no sweat. You could. You can always add this, you know, during assembly, and uh, and paint it up, you know, the same way that we painted the the cupola and the turret, and and you know you don't have to turn these into special projects. I, I, it's just a preference for me. It's eye catching. It makes my tank, you know, a little more um, personal as opposed to, you know. Um, a whole line of king tigers on an assembly line but to personalize it with with dings and, and that sort of thing scratches and all that sort of stuff is just a preference to me so so we'll deal with the turret ring just place it on there for now Of course, I'm getting hairspray all over my beautiful books. <laughs> but anyway, a couple of little zaps of hairspray. And we're ready to go. All right, so we'll... Uh, let that just dry for about three or four minutes. I'll, I'll mix the paint, and by the time the paint's mixed and everything, um, that hairspray will be ready to, to rock. And one of the things about, and very, very important and, and not discussed, and, and, I, and I've said it at length a few times, one of the um, things about the hairspray is, is that I personally have great results if I mix these, 
these two will give me the, the light color on that I'm going to paint my ring. But then I am going to mix them in the airbrush with a little bit of water versus lacquer thinner or Tamiya X20 or rummy alcohol. You have to put all these aside and then, like I say, if you're going to chip it off, using water is, is, is the right way to mix it as a thinner for the paints. So keep that in mind. Um, and if you don't do it that way, it's just a struggle to chip it, that's all. If you accidentally mix it with lacquer thinner, then just be prepared. Because <laughs> it takes a lot more rubbing and scratching to, to you know, get any results. So anyway, I'll go and get the water and, uh, and I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, I've mixed the uh, water with my uh, formula for our color and the mixture is about 50-50 uh, PSI is 20 so so if the reduction is uh, a little higher than what I'm used to I sometimes quite often spray it as you guys know at around 60% thinner but because I'm using water I'm gonna strengthen a little bit And I'm just putting on a very light coat. And as you guys know, around this turret ring, there's two other colors. There's red and green here. So I'll address that in a second. And on some photo etch uh, Abra parts, this part comes in brass and what have you. I'm just quite happy using the Tamiya part. And if the Tamiya part in certain tanks comes out a little thick, just um, take some sandpaper and just thin it down to a more scale um, thickness, which I have done. See, and as I spoke about guys, I know these aren't state-of-the-art photo etched um, clamps and what have you on these parts. But you know what, with um, a little bit of finesse and skilled painting, um, plus two, you, you don't want to get bogged down in, um, you know, a year and a half of painting one little, to me, a tank. The enjoyment of all this is... Um, you know, it's how you guys measure it. If that's what you guys want to do and build clamps for all this sort of stuff, um, please do. I, I, my enjoyment of it is, is is just a different different than yours, maybe. Um, it's not necessary for yours truly to be bogged down and putting on photo etch and all that sort of stuff. Um, at the age of 60, all you have to do is look at your stash and realize that Maybe getting to the bottom of these quicker is just with this sort of solution. So, anyway, the um, we're gonna just let that dry, and then I'm gonna start to chip it. And the, and the different things for chipping tools, such as this little pair of tweezers. This is a good scratch um, thing for chipping. But there there's a number of things. Obviously, toothpicks and uh, you know stiff paint brushes to start rubbing this off or where I'm going to go next. So, and then I'm going to just entirely get into a different color when I come to painting these exhaust systems. So, but in any event, let's these dry for a moment and then we'll uh, 
then we'll start chipping it and then we'll put some oil paints on it and, and just like I say turn them into individual projects um, it takes very brief time but the result is uh, you know it's superior than just paying it and gluing it on your tank so anyway like I say spending 15 minutes on these little things for a total of possibly 45 minutes um, it's gonna be more pleasing to the eye and you know your your tanks gonna end up a little better so anyway let's put the airbrush away for a second so we don't spill it and then we'll start the chipping okay so the next uh, procedure after it's painted I've, I've let it sit for about uh, five or six minutes and um, again uh, the the yellow paint has been mixed with water now I'm gonna take the water rub it on the model and the chipping should start now some guys get impatient with this don't get impatient just let the water sit there and if you want to add even a touch of uh, detergent to this just a touch that'll let the water sit there even longer So now it's got the water on it. And it used to be, I, I used to put warm water versus cold, but the reality is I don't think it matters. So now I'm going to use the same brush that I just applied the water with. Now I, I want small chips here. The, the reason for that is the following. We're at the high, high, high mark of the tank. The amount of heavy stones and what have you are not ever going to hit the turret ring. You know the heavy stones from the the, the travel that this tank is going to take the stones are not kicked up from the ground and then tossed against this ring here to, to 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 generate any chipping the chipping is from adding the machine gun and you know going around and around with the machine gun and and what have you putting shells through this hatch is unusual but nevertheless putting shells in here probably happens so that's also going to bang into this little turret ring here now all I'm going to do is sit here and rub it a little bit and you're going to see little miniature little chips. And as Mike Rinaldi has always said, there's no chip too small. Now I don't know how this is going to pick up on the camera, but uh, let's just get the chips moving here. And of course when you're on film and, and I have my viewers watching, there's no chipping happening. They're faint, faint, faint chips. And it's a delicate piece of equipment too, so as far as a piece of plastic goes, so Maybe I will switch to hot water. <laughs> but once you get one chip, you're gonna get all kinds. So let's take um, this little thing here and watch what's gonna happen, guys. It's all gonna chip. And you can just barely see a few chips starting to form. And like I say, this is a delicate piece of plastic, so it's going to be easy to snap if you, if you put a lot of down pressure on it. So don't do that. Just be patient. And because we're modelers, we have the patience. But they're just starting. They're, they're almost invisible, and that's the whole idea here. As you can see, they're, they're delicate, but they're there. And you can, again, this has got sharp points on it. This will also create some scratches. 
And if you're watching this gentleman on a phone or uh, what have you, you're not even going to see what I'm up to, so. But they're all forming, guys. They're all coming along. Now, is this any better than the sponge routine? Just depends on how good you are with the sponge. Personally, I'm not so good with the sponge. I overdo it all the time. So, but I, I have buddies out there that will swear by the sponge technique. And that's just, you know, taking a sponge on a tweezers and... And it works too, so keep in mind, guys, like, th this program is, is, is strictly, I I'm just kindling for you guys to get the, get the fire going, you know? That's all that Dave Brown does, is he, he, he just provides the little bit of kindling, and you guys are going to spark everything up. Mike Rinaldi was the guy who uh, sparked yours truly up. You know, I mean, he changed my modeling big time. Marcus Nichols had a beautiful, uh, and you guys will remember this, in, in the night, in the 2003 or 2004, in the Tamiya magazine, there was an article on a, on a T-55, I think it was Marcus Nichols. Pretty sure it was Marcus. And that T-55 was the most beautiful models you could ever see. In fact, I probably have the article close by. And um, that, that just changed my modeling in a flash. So, like I say, guys, just remember that yours truly is um, here just to, just, just to add a few little ideas into your, into your modeling. Now, as you can see, guys, it's, it's, it's almost invisible. But there's all kinds of chipping, miniature little chipping. And don't forget, this is only going to, it's not chipped by stones or anything like that. It's chipped by a, you know, a 50-pound machine gun whizzing around on the top of the rail there. So, you know, the um, the type of chip chipping is going to be different than, say, the, the chipping that's going to be in amongst this groundwork of this tank. So just be, um, just be prepared to be patient. And 10 minutes later, you've got a turret ring that, that's all set to go. Now, as far as changing the color, I'm going to make sure that I have it positioned properly on a tank. And then if I want to now change with a little bit of red and a little bit of green, I can just dig out my airbrush, spray it up with the matching color, just faintly where it belongs. And then, just with a little hand, uh, a little... 10-0 brush just add a few little chips if I want to but right now it looks fine and then I'm gonna take the same procedure and I'm gonna do it to our clamp here and again turning this little clamp into a project a 10 minute little project is all I want to do so I'm gonna cover it with water stimulate the uh, the hairspray underneath again let the uh, water sit on there and get through the paint a little bit and we just touch it with our tweezers it's a nice way to chip is with these sharp sharp tweezers you can do it with a pin I've seen Adam Wilder do it with a pin and don't forget guys they, these little clamps they're gonna take as much abuse as anything on this tank so you know if, if used 
in the field to put on track or to get towed out of a jam. Um, these things are going to get beaten up pretty well. So keep that in mind. If you just paint them yellow and stick them on your tank, you're missing out on some fun. Like I say, guys, on the on, if you're watching this through um, your phones on your lunch break or something at work, you're not going to necessarily see the, this going on. So um, enlarge it if you can, because these chips are purposely quite small. But there, you can see one starting right there. But as you can see, it's all starting to take place. And then if 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 your particular tank has two of these clamps, do them different. You know, like do this one maybe, you know, really pounded bad. And and maybe the other one just isn't been used enough. You know, so change up and don't do them you know, don't do them the same. But there you are, you're uh, you're starting to see this really chip up. That's what you want. But anyway, that's the procedure for using the hairspray. I'm just going to, uh, off camera, just continue a little bit. And then um, shortly I'm going to put an oil wash on this. You know, let it dry and what have you. And then uh, So these little projects, guys, they take very short time. But the end result is well worth it. And like I say, it's it's better than just painting them yellow and gluing them onto your tank. So that's um like I say, there's there's a few stages to the whole process, the hairspray, the color, the chipping, and then the oil wash. And the oil wash can be done three days from now or two weeks from now. It doesn't matter. Um, and then after that, you're probably going to also, depending on where it hangs on the tank, on your particular tank, you might not be doing a king dagger, but where it hangs on your tank is also going to be a change of color due to um, what sort of weathering you have. Is it close to the bottom of the tank, which it will be on this one? Um, there's certain powders and certain, you know, uh, Vallejo, um, you know, the beautiful powders that Dave and I use are also going to be attached to this little project too. So the whole, the whole thing is all, like I say, it takes 15 minutes to do so from start to finish. Um, but the end result is fantastic. So like I say, off camera, I will, um, Take out some oil paints, let this dry, put the hair dryer to it to dry up this, then bring out the oil paints to paint it, which I'll show on camera, and then um, and then we'll carry on with some of the other parts here. So I'm gonna hesitate just for a few minutes. We'll shut the camera down, and um, like I say, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get back to that in a few minutes. Thanks for watching. Okay, gentlemen, we've uh, taken our our. Uh, clamp and uh, now we're gonna add a little bit of oil paints and I love these two colors industrial earth number 90 Optilung, number 92 German ochre and I put them out on the on the piece of cardboard and as you guys know I like to put them out oh, about a half an hour before using and then the linseed see see it forming a little ring here that's all good that is number one it's gonna help it dry um, less glossy and, and it's just uh, the characteristic of this changes once it's sitting out on this cardboard a little bit more to my liking so um 
I'm just going to give this a little oil wash, and here's our little turret ring. Give that an oil wash. And then I'm going to let them sit until the uh, until it's the day that I uh, add the pigments. And personally, guys, I find it difficult to uh, put these washes on things with acrylic paint. You know, I know that Vallejo has an acrylic wash, but I just find I have more, um, I, I can get away with a little bit more using oil paint. So, but it's all preference. I know, I know that some of you have um, washes that are acrylic, but... So you need a, a form of thinner. As you can see, my paintbrush is constantly going back into the thinner here. And um, that's obviously enamel thinner. And I use Humbrol, but once again, there's different thinners on the market. Enamel thinners. MIG has an odorless thinner. AK. That's just about it. Now the nice thing is too is that oil paints, as you guys know, dr takes a little while to dry. So I can horse around with this throughout the day. If 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 there's an area of this that I don't particularly like or want to change, I can just go back to it, create the little shadows. But suddenly our little tow clamp, our, our tow cable clamp is is much different than it was um just by painting it yellow you know there's a lot more character in it now i'll do the same to the ring so i i mix up the two um, colors together just get a nice little contrasting color by adding a little more to, of the darker color against this light color because the contrast will make it pop a little better And like I said, gentlemen, this is a delicate piece of plastic, so just be careful when you're handling it. You don't want to snap it. If you snap it, you'll never get it to look right again, even if you glue it together. Um, they never look the same. So do your best not to snap this little part. And do the inside. Don't forget the inside, guys. And what will happen, when you stick this on your tank, it may look a little different. So just um, just give this a little coating of wash. Just give your cupola, and, I, and of course I don't have the center hatch on here either, the, the commander's hatch on here. So there's a, f there's a few things, you know, to tie this all together. But this is just the, once again, this is just the beginning. You can easily marriage the two up, harmonize them together once they're all together. So... Anyway, there's our little turret ring with all our uh, scratching and our washes on it. So, like I say, spend a little time on these things. Um, and overall, it, it may appear as if, if if it takes me six months to do a tank. It, it doesn't whatsoever. I, I obviously have to 
wait for the film crew to come here. I could fly through this model, um, you know, at a much quicker pace, 25 hours from start to finish. Um, but of course, by having a YouTube channel, of course you can't always film. <laughs> so, um, even though gentlemen, we're up to episode 10 here, um, in a couple of weekends, you can be finished your tiger tank. So don't don't panic that it's that it's been a four month project and that we're, you know, we're never going to get anything done. That's keep in mind that once you guys have all the episodes together, you can watch this binge watch like Breaking Bad, and you'll see that there we are. And like I say, once it gets on here. We'll harmonize it up with the hatch and what have you and um, just let that dry. And I always let my oil paints dry by themselves. I don't apply a, a hair dryer to them or anything like that to speed them up. I normally just let them dry by themselves. So that's the end of our episode today. But um, I will... Um, now we'll carry on our next episodes. We'll do the mufflers, which require to me a flesh and, and, a, and a oil paints and what have you. But we'll get on those as well. And as, and as far as these um, uh, tow cables, there's ways of handling these if you're going to use the Tamiya ones um, a little differently too. J just to sharpen them up and, and not make them so out of the box as, as they appear right now. So anyway, there's a little few little tricks to, you know, making these appear a little better too. So to me, it does a great job at, at all this sort of stuff. But um, this kit's probably 20 years old. So it's going to take a little TLC to bring it up to a standard of 2018. So like I say, it doesn't take much. But anyway, um, so I'll, th that'll be our next episode which we will be back to see in about a week. Thanks so much for watching. See you shortly. Thanks.